the UMTS standard, the new release uh, in the protocol that has been embedded to support uh, multimedia broadcast and multicast services, that's the MBMS standard, over existing infrastructure. So uh, in theory, M UMTS LTE will not need uh, to so much of mobile TV. Also, WiMAX, uh, WiMAX has, uh, is capable of broadcasting. So the next slide goes to uh, look at the status of, uh, of, the, of the switch of plans. And specifically, uh, I wanted to show you the, what is the trend and what is the momentum behind the so-called 800 megahertz band. Uh, this graph shows you the, the switch of plans and including Poland that has said they will switch off by 2015. Um, and the spectrum that has been cleared, the, not the digital dividend, but in red we can see that a few countries already uh, chose to make 72 megahertz of spectrum of, in the UHF, in the upper part of the UHF plan, to make it available for telecoms. Uh, we think that this is the, the critical mass that was needed to, to start, uh, well, this trend uh, will probably be, be followed by, by other countries, uh, Finland, Sweden, uh, Switzerland, France, proposed in the UK and, and, and Norway, uh, but possibly Germany and Ireland are going to follow soon. What are the reasons for this? Well, economies of scale, um, many benefits. This band was already allocated uh, to mobile uh, in the World Radio Conference. Well, all the benefits have already been described by, by my colleagues. So, on the other hand, uh, if all this digital dividend spectrum is dedicated to, to, to broad, is allotted to broadcasters, to all the broadcasters, the maximum that they could reach uh, and the offering, it will be 48 HDTV channels. If 72 megahertz go for telecoms, uh, they will deploy 10 multiplexes and reach 40 HDTV channels, with the benefit of having possibly nearly uh, full mobile broadband coverage. Uh, well, this has this hypothesis has been described in various studies, so I'm just repeating it. But, uh, but regulators pr should probably uh, see if there is a demand to fill in for uh, 48 HDTV channels. Is there really um, going to be uh, a need for those? And we need to consider also the collapse of, of the advertising revenues uh, and what is the impact of this uh, crisis in the sector uh, in the number of digital television channels. So I, I arrived to my conclusions pretty quickly, and uh, this is a, a time where you need to make important decisions. Uh, otherwise, the investment will be delayed. Otherwise, investment will not start. It's the creation of the services, not the switch off that will create the dividend. Uh, so any delay in the launch of the switchover process will, and the international negotiations that come along will affect the start of the reassignment process and therefore the date of the avail availability of the new services. So uh, a consensus is probably needed between a cooperative approach, not a combative approach, uh, collaboration, not competition, that's why the title of my presentation, between the, the industries, these two industries. Uh, all parties involved, uh, I think, will, will probably benefit from this approach. Uh, from a timing perspective, the UHF band should become available in 2012, uh, but all the operators will be asked to bid and pay uh, for this spectrum as early as next year, 2010. Um, and that's, this is where spectrum liberalization comes in. Uh, whatever happens, they should be able to change their minds uh, as regards to the technology or even or the devices or the services they want to offer. So possibly to think about a technology and service neutral approach and in introducing trading 
uh, is not such a bad, uh, bad idea. So if the two industries, mobile, uh, the mobile community and the broadcasting community can work together uh, on the engineering and the business challenges that impact uh, the co-sharing of this spectrum that is likely to happen, uh, we mean that, for example, for the broadcasters, they will need reassurance that, uh, that this business model uh, or collaboration is going to work. Uh, in turn, if they, they start talking to each other, maybe new joint ventures and, and, and joint revenue opportunities can be deployed. Uh, the two last points is about the white spaces. This is uh, uh, the spectrum that is between the bands. Uh, it's, it's underused. The, the business model uh, of, this spectrum, of the use of this spectrum is weak. Um, it's very fragile. The, uh, there are hundreds of spectrum available, hundreds of megahertz of spectrum available, and that has a social and economic value as well. Um, but due to the lack of, of, of efficient devices deployed, uh, it's underused. So the answer could be to, to realize and to, to, to make this value uh, effective. Uh, it would be possibly to encourage the broadcasters uh, to develop a white space device uh, specification a standard that could be, could be integrated into the DVB uh, portable TV specification. So, so this could, could, that's another way of collaboration with the, with the mobile industry. Uh, that's a thought. And another possible uh, scenario could be the cellular and broadcast site sharing. Uh, they are going to share the spectrum, so may, why not uh, sharing the sites at high and low UHF band. Uh, so the transmissions from, from the TV, from the cellular infield stations, the, the cellulars that, that migrate, uh, that mitigate the, pure, 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 uh, the poor re reception, uh, for example, are, could be another credible way forward for DBBH, uh, DBB portable TV handsets. Uh, well, that's, that's all. Those are my conclusions. Um, the collaboration, I hope, uh, will start soon. And thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the attention. I can take any questions. Thank you.